Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today it's a knitting day. Okay, so I've been gone <laughs> for such a long time. It turns out that recording during renovations, even if you're not living through it, somehow it's just, it's been, it's been a couple weeks. It's been a couple weeks. I do have an update on the apartment coming and things are coming along. We did have a small flood, a backup of sewage in our brand new apartment which was unfortunate, but could have been a lot worse had it been, you know, later on um, and all of our stuff was in there. So at least it was still in a phase where things were already in a state of construction, but it did put us back just a little bit. Um, still, we are right at the point of moving and that's happening very soon, but I will take you tomorrow, hopefully for a little tour of the apartment as it is now. And you can see some of the finishes we've chosen and everything. I think it's going to be beautiful. It's just, no matter what you do, a renovation is always stressful and goes over and is more than you expected to spend. I think that's just the law of renovations. <laughs> so of course now we're all packed up. I have a little bit of sewing out, but to be totally honest, it's been so hot and my sewing room is more suited to a greenhouse right now than to a sewing room. As you can see, I've been really getting into plants and at some point maybe I'll do a video just on my plants, but I uh, have been knitting and it's interesting because I am normally not a summer knitter at all. Uh, at all like i just if, if unless you count starting knitting in august in anticipation of the fall but i don't generally knit with summer fibers um yeah i just haven't before and for some reason after my knitting mojo went away about five months ago four or five months ago all of a sudden it came back and now i'm knitting like crazy so i'm going to share knitting with you right now because that's what i'm doing okay so I have two finished objects and the first one is actually what got me knitting again. So let me, do I have an extra bit of this yarn? I don't think, wait, maybe I do. So my knit crate last month, I think it was last month, was called Uru Yarn Asher in the color Old Barn. And I don't have my little leftovers left, but it looks like this, okay? So when, imagine this very big. <laughs> <laughs> and when it showed up, I was like, oh, ooh, like I love the color. I love the texture. I, like I said, I don't often knit with plant fibers. And this as a plant fiber was great. You know what? I've written down all of my notes and I didn't write down what the fiber content of this was. Hang on. Okay, so this yarn, which is a sport weight, the makeup of this is 30% linen flax. 34% cotton, 19% tensile lyocell, and 11% nylon. So a mixture of different fibers in there, mostly plant fiber, or yeah, except for the nylon, plant fibers. And so I was trying to decide what to make with it. I wanted to just use my two skeins that I got from Knit Crate, which I have left over, so I did that very well. And as I was searching through, I came upon the staple linen top by Hohi Locatelli, and I'll put in a picture. And I thought, oh, that's really cute because it has a little bit of a detail, but it's quite simple. The yardage was perfect for what I was gonna do. And that's what I made. So here, I tried to put it on, you guys. I, I would melt, I would melt. It's very hot here <laughs> in Spain. Everyone's walking around going, que calor, madre mia, que calor, everybody. So here is what I ended up making. And this is the Simple Linen Top by Hohi Locatelli in Uru Knits Asher in the color Old Barn. And I'll put in a few pictures of me wearing it since I'm not wearing it now. So a few details on this. Um, I was just excited to knit with it. And because I hadn't been knitting in a while, I thought, you know, I keep leaning in because I've turned this way. Let's do this. There, okay. I hadn't been knitting in a while, and I thought if I'm inspired to knit, just knit. And so I did do a gauge swatch, but I don't know, it lied. <laughs> and I kind of got most of the way to, so you knit, you knit this, you, you, you start at one shoulder, 
you knit back and forth, you create the neckline, you come down, you create the armholes, then you pick up the stitches on the shoulders and you do the same for the back. So you end up with this sort of, this kind of shape with a, with a neck in the middle. Do you know what I mean? And the armholes. So I got all the way through that. I had actually connected it and I realized that it was not gonna fit me under the arm. It, it was not at all gonna fit me under the arm. So I ripped back and I added probably another three or four centimeters to, to each side. And it still only just, just makes it under the arm. So mine, it probably has less ease than was intended. I went up, I think two needle sizes once I realized that this was a little bit, that the fabric up here was not, was not giving me much drape at all. Um, but this, is very easy, very intuitive. I love the twisted stitch pattern. I think it's really, really pretty. It does not show up on me to be see-through at all, maybe because, again, it's not as drapey as it should be. Um, in the pictures that I just showed you was the original length that I did it to. And then afterwards I thought, you know what? So the part of the problem was that this was written for linen and linen does grow, especially in length. And so she says in the pattern that she's accounted for that by about 25%, 20 or 25%. And because this has other fibers in it, it did grow, but not very much. And so after the fact, I ripped back the, uh, the bind off and I added probably another three to four centimeters. I probably even could have done more, but I got, <laughs> bored and frustrated and just cast off. So now it's at the point where it's definitely still something that, that I would wear with high-waisted things, but I am assured it covers my belly button no matter what, and that is what that was what I was going for. But this fabric is lovely. I definitely can make another one of these. Um, I could do it in wool. I could do it in cotton. I could do it in linen. I probably would, if not size up, because I did make the medium, I would make sure that I got a very drapey fabric. Um, but yeah, this is this is awesome, I love it. Okay, that's my first FO and I have one other one. So once I got going on that, I picked back up my anchors tee. And so here is my anchors tee. And you can see that it's using this beautiful yarn and there's a story here, so let me explain. You may remember last year I made the Le Pouf Cardi and I'll put in a picture. Actually, I made it two years ago. I made it just before Barcelona Knits. So that would have been, that would have been November of, oh gosh, actually that, that would have been two years ago at least because it was pre-COVID. Yeah, because it was just pre-COVID. So I made it from Julie Aslan Fino as well as a few other fibers and I had a lot of fun knitting it. I had a lot of fun putting together the colors and whatever. And what you do is you hold two fibers, two threads. Oh gosh, it has been a long time since I've done this. Can you tell? <laughs> two strands, you hold it double. And it was very heavy. So it looks beautiful. It photographs beautifully. I almost never wore it because it would fall off my shoulders. It, the raglan would not stay put. Um, I made it a little bit longer, which probably also added to the weight. And after two years of not wearing it, I was like, I really saved for this yarn. Like I used up all my points and at my LYS that sadly is no longer in business. And it was really, really special yarn to me. And it was when I was a new knitter and I was like, I really want to wear this. I don't want it just languishing in something that I'm not wearing. And so I frogged it. I frogged the whole thing. Now, because of the way the fade went, some of that yarn has already gone into other things. Like for instance, it went into my Stockholm or Oslo hat. I always get them confused. <laughs> I'll put in a picture. A lot of my extra yarn from that went into this hat. Um, but I definitely have enough, not only for this, but for something else. So what I did was I, I just started at the top and I was going all the way down and then I found more of this yarn <laughs> that I had up here. And so I added that in and then the light gray at the end. I tried to make the the sleeves equal. I'll put in some pictures of me wearing it. I do need to stretch out the neckline a little bit so that it sits down a little bit. It does sit a little high, a little bit awkward, 
but this yarn is so dreamy and soft it's a it's a merino cashmere silk blend uh, I think it's a I think it's a heavy fingering sport weight and now I have two balls you know I don't know how many grams it is I haven't measured but two balls of the darkest color in my sweater left and with that I'm hoping to make a cumulus top which I'm going to show you later in my acquisitions so this also turned out beautifully the other thing I made was the Agnes jumper and I've talked about it previously maybe comment below if you want me to talk about it more but I made it in Ulysse I'll put in a picture and I showed it to you in one of my sewing videos so unfortunately that's all packed away but that was my first true color work sweater and uh, the Ulysse yarn is beautiful it does pill but I'm told that if I glean it once or twice it won't pill anymore it's definitely amazing for color work um, the the feel of it is just kind of you know bouncy and lovely um, I wish I had gone up a size and I'm finding that a lot lately so you'll see with the next set of projects that I'm doing I am moving up a size so where I would normally do the size 2 or the size small I'm doing the size 3 or the size medium because I feel like wherever I am now in my journey um, I want a little bit more ease in my sweaters okay so whips I have one whip and two cast-ons from when you last saw me. I think, have I talked about this before? No, I probably haven't. So you can call it a whip, you can call it a cast-on, up to you. It's definitely in progress for me. This is the Friday Tea by Petite Knit. And I wanted a classic Marinière striped sweater. And I'm not gonna be able to show you too much because it is on shorter cables, but you can see here, Let's see if I can hold it up kind of how it'll go. I think it's like, I think this is a sleeve and this is a sleeve. Yeah, okay. So it's gonna go like this. And it's a broken rib pattern, which means one row is knit and one row is knit purl. I actually like that because I increase on the knit rows and you don't increase on the broken rib rows or the knit pearl rows. And so for me, that's just a it's a way for me to keep on track because I'm notorious for missing increases or, you know, kind of forgetting, oh, this is an increased row. Is this an increased row? Is this not? So I kind of like that that's, you know, uh, a signal to my brain. Oh, are you just knitting? Then you should be increasing. Now I'm doing this in Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino and this is 70 percent organic cotton and 30 percent merino super super soft it has because of the, the merino it has the flexibility but it's also very fresh i also did this blue color here i'll link to my ravelry page in terms of colors um, and so this takes i'm on my second ball right now of the white and there's only one ball of the blue um, and yeah I'm enjoying this. I mean, it's on 2.75 millimeter needle needles. So it's, you know, not that much large or larger than when I knit socks. <laughs> so this is going to take a while. I am almost at the point of splitting for the sleeves. I thought I was there. And then it turns out that I was done increasing for the sleeves, but not for the body. So I'm very close. I'm very close. And I can guarantee this is something that I will wear a lot. And so I'm really happy to work on it and it's not mindless but it's kind of mindless like in that once the once i finish the increases um and join for the body then it's just going to be you know zipping around and something that i can do while i'm watching tv or whatever so again yeah that's the friday tea by petite knit in knitting for olive cotton merino okay and then i have these in my my product bag that I made with some what I call micro quilting which are these teeny tiny little quilt blocks I am contemplating making bags to sell um, that'll be a project for the fall maybe designing something that I feel would be useful this size actually is is kind of a funny shape in that it's sort of an elongated pattern but I can keep so much in here and I, I right now have two projects that sit in here Okay, the other work in progress I have, no, I have two more. <laughs> okay, the next work in progress I have 
is the Pearl Soho Half and Half Triangles Wrap, which of course is the classic that so many people have made. This happened because Pearl Soho had a sale on their linen quill. I had never tried it before. You guys know that I almost never order yarns from North America because I don't like paying for duty. And whereas in Canada, if I ordered something from Europe, I might get dinged on duty. <laughs> I might get dinged on duty, uh, I don't know, like 30% of the time. And then most of the times it would just come through. In Spain, every single time. If you order from the UK or from North America, you get dinged on duty. And that is a lot. And so I don't generally, but I decided to, you know, use some of the money in my PayPal account from sponsorships to, you know, make something that I thought that you guys would enjoy. So I have two colors. I have chestnut red and pale mushroom. These are the colors I chose. I just thought that this is a color, color combination that I would wear a lot, that I would enjoy knitting on. You know, I, there, there could have been some more out there color combos, but for me, I thought this would be great. And actually when I first got it, so I did get three of each, which is what you need for the half and half triangles wrap. Um, if you're not familiar with this linen quill, it's 50% fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca and 15% linen. It's actually quite reasonably priced. I think, I wanna say it's like 18, ish us before the 20 percent off and then i paid shipping and i did pay about 33 percent duty so that kind of canceled out anything else but it's it's fine like this this was a special fun thing now that i'm back into knitting again i i don't i don't begrudge myself that but it's it is good to keep in mind um and then i started this half and half triangles wrap i'll put in a picture in case you aren't really a knitter and so you don't know what i'm really talking about but this is a very famous I would say free pattern from Pearl Soho. And it's essentially a great big square of two triangles and it's just garter, 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 garter. So it's very meditative. Um, I remember that Amy Palco of The Meaningful Stitch talked about that she knit on her half and half triangles wrap during her move last year or whenever it was. And it really helped her. And I kind of feel the same. Like there's been, you know, there's just, you know, nothing, earth shattering, but everyday stresses that I sometimes have a hard time dealing with. And I do find that knitting chills me out. So do my plants. I also find my plants chill me out, which is a very big switch from the rest of my life when I couldn't keep a house plant alive to save my life. And now I find them very relaxing. Anywho, so you essentially um, cast on 260 stitches and you go along, you go along, you go along, and then you have a marker here and you take this marker and right after it, you do a wrap and turn, you turn around, you knit one, you put your marker back, and then you go all the way back. And so each time you wrap and turn, you're creating this angle that then turns into a triangle. And so that this triangle, from what I can gather, takes about two and a half skeins per triangle. I am not even, you know, I'm not even halfway through my, my first. So this is something that will be ready for fall and it's just sort of sitting there. It's not a, it's not a rushed project at all. Um, side note, I find lately I'm really enjoying hand winding my skeins of yarn. I haven't pulled out my ball winder and I don't know how long. Again, under, partly it's under the meditative quality of knitting is hand winding a skein. But also I find that I have to take breaks from my knitting or else I get pains in my wrists and my elbows. And so when I know that I shouldn't be knitting, but I want to do something that's like knitting, <laughs> I hand wind a skein or I weave in ends or like I find another knitting type task to do that counts as a break, but still, still is part of knitting. And so, yeah, so I often hand wind my skeins. So this is going to take me a while and I'm totally okay with that. So the last one I have is a test knit, which leads me into test knitting. So this, okay, let me, let me go back. Uh, I find my test knits for the most part 
either on Ravelry or I get on the mailing list of different designers and they send out their test calls. So for instance, people who send out test calls by email, there is uh, Samantha Guerin, who's this, this person here, um, Teti Nitz, she sends out hers by email. Uh, there's a couple of different ones. If I think of them, I'll list, list them below. So that's one of the ways if you want to get into test knitting is you can get on the email list of the designer. The other way is to join the Ravelry group of the designer. Um, or another way is to join the Ravelry group of the designer. So for instance, uh, some people that I've found test knits through Ravelry are Isabel Kramer, Sari Nordland, Andrea Mowry, if I think of others, I'll put them down below as well. So that's another way. And so if I'm itching for a test knit, <laughs> I will check my group section on Ravelry, which shows me all the latest, the latest posts in any groups that I'm in. I'll check that sort of over the, a couple mornings a week, over the space of a week or two, and someone will post something. Oh, Moonstruck Knits, that's the other one. Moonstruck Knits, Natasha Hornby. She also posts hers there. They go very fast. So if you don't see it in the first few hours and they're a popular designer, chances are you're not going to get in. But it is a great way to kind of also get a sneak peek at what your favorite designers are bringing out. You can see, you know, sort of three or six months in advance what your favorite designers have coming down the pipeline. Um, and I always find that fun. It's like a little preview. Okay, so this is called the Manchalope Scarf Shawl. Actually, it's TBD. <laughs> It's currently called the Manchalope scarf. And I'm gonna show it to you first and then I'm gonna explain something about the yarn. So this is something I don't do very often. This is an all over lace pattern and it's kind of nice to, to put it with the white because you can see the lace pattern a little better because obviously this isn't blocked yet. I am probably about just less than halfway through. I have three more weeks to complete it so I am not concerned. Um, and this is knit in Manchalope yarn. Now, initially, I actually started this in a superwash merino that I had on hand because I didn't want to spend money on the test knit. And then I just did not like the result at all <laughs> in, in superwash merino. And so I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So instead, I looked again at what the original was. And the original was an unspun yarn like this. Now, if you're, I'm sure you, there's been a trend, you've seen the trend lately towards unspun yarns. You're going to see this one and I have another one later. And you may even see an unspun yarn cowl coming up. Little tip. Keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. And I saw this and I was thinking of things like Nutiden or Plutolope. Is it Plutolope or Letlope that's unspun? one or the other, maybe both, I don't remember. Um, but these unspun yarns, so the idea being that the yarn itself is not has not been twisted into what you would normally think of as a yarn, the way that, for instance, this yarn has a twist on it, right? The fibers have been twisted and that then makes it easier to knit. I think that's pretty clear, it is, it is easier to knit, but this is also, you can see you can do this, and it just pulls apart like that, which kind of stresses some people out, but literally all you have to do if that happens is you can put a little water on your hand and uh, you just do that and it's back together. So I thought, oh, this might be fun. And then I found out that this is Spanish yarn. This is Menchalope yarn, and it is the brainchild of two brothers who own a mill in the Castilla-La Mancha area of Spain. Uh, the name of the company is Wool Dreamers. And the, this yarn comes from sheep whose milk is used to make manchego cheese. And usually the sheep, the sheep, the sheep that make manchego cheese, um, their yarn is not used for anything. It's just, you know, kind of cast aside. And they said, let's make it into wool. So they have this and they have a couple of different types of yarn that they create. It's very soft. Someone asked if it's softer than the Nutiden. Uh, you know, the Nutiden also kind of moves and changes. Um, I'll show it to you later. I think it is softer, not significantly softer, but a little bit softer. And I thought, okay, 
I'm going to order some of this. And the nice thing, again, the opposite of buying the Pearl Soho, which was expensive plus, well, it was expensive because I bought so many plus shipping plus duty. This was local to me in that it was within Spain. And so this was seven euros, seven euros, 70, um, a plate. So these are called plates. Uh, and I think I spent four euros on shipping. So this was much more affordable. Uh, so it's all, it all works out in the wash, right? It's all, it's all a balance in the, in the wash. And so I've started this and a couple of interesting things about doing lace patterns. So one of the things that maybe a little tip that I have is because I'm not used to doing lace, I guess I could put in a lifeline. I know that that's a good thing to do as well. A little bit tougher with this yarn. I am knitting it double. So you can see that there's two separate strands here. And what I do is every, you know, every once in a while, I literally just go like this and I felt together the next couple meters. And I do find it easier to knit it with the two fibers felted together. And of course it's summertime, my hands are sweaty, so <laughs> quite easy to do like that. I haven't found breakage to be a problem unless, um, as long as I like, I'm sitting it with next to me, with it next to me on, on the couch and I just unwind a little bit and then I let it drop and I unwind a little bit and I let it drop. If I have like, my phone and my iPad and like the dog and whatever, and it pulls on anything. Yes, it splits, but then you just put it back together. It really isn't any big deal in that case at all. Um, in terms of the lace pattern, I finished the first section, no problem. I finished the sec second section, I was eight stitches off or nine. And I, I honestly still don't know. <laughs> I honestly still have no idea how I got off, but clearly they build on each other. And so I had to figure it out. And so I ended up doing another repeat of the pattern to get to the right stitch count. And in the pattern, she gives you the stitch count at the end of each section, but each section is like 48 rows. And so if I make a mistake at the beginning of that 48 rows, then I'm in trouble. And so what I did was I looked at the math and I went, okay, over 48 rows, you have, there, there were basically three sections in those 48 rows and you're increasing overall by 24 stitches in the section. Therefore, I'm going eight stitches per section. And so I went and I wrote in on the pattern at the end of each section within the chart, what are my numbers supposed to be like? One second. Okay, I had to go check on the dog because she was <laughs> barking. She, she doesn't mind if I'm out of the house I mean, she doesn't like it, but she gets over it. But if I'm in a different part of the house and she's not allowed to be with me, she is not impressed. <laughs> she's like, where is my mummy? And why am I not allowed to be with her? Let's see if I can get more air in here. Oh, oh that's better. So yeah, I found that adding, figuring out in smaller chunks where my stitch count should be allows me to then course correct quicker if I am off. And that's because I'm a new, well, not new, inexperienced lace knitter. It's not something I do very often. So again, this is written for two skeins or two plates in this case. And I am probably about a little less than halfway through. So yeah, I think it's gonna be really lovely for winter. Clearly right now is way too hot um, but when I'm sitting downstairs and we have a little bit of air conditioning on I, it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me and it's actually really kind of fun so those are all my whips and then next uh, what's up next so I have two more test knits that I that I signed up for so one is for making stories magazine that um, a magazine that I really like and I have a couple of issues and uh, if you want, you can get on their email for test knitting. And a call came through for the Edamine sweater, which is by Emma, I don't know if it's Duche. I, I would say Duche, but I'll put her name here on the screen. 
And I just thought, what a cute sweater. I just, I just thought it was, I love the color work and I thought you could do something really pretty. It's also using the Ulysse yarn and there was a discount, a 20% discount. And I also knew that I had some Ulysse left over from my previous project. And so I applied and I was accepted. So this is not due until November. I have a long time. I don't even have the pattern yet. It doesn't come through until mid-August. But uh, I did buy the yarn so that I have it on hand with the discount. Now, I really wanted to make sure that I used some of the beauties I already had on hand. So I was buying based on what I already have. So I'll show you a couple of the, a couple of the skeins that I bought. This is basically what I have, what I've left out and not packed yet. So I had two skeins of the Darjeeling color. And so I thought, let's make the main color of the sweater in the Darjeeling. That way I only have to buy two balls of the Darjeeling. I don't have to buy four. The other possibility is I could have used this one for the main color, but I just decided not to. <laughs> so I bought three different colors to play with to figure out what I wanted the color scheme to be. And the way that I played with them, so let me show you the colors that I did. Of course, I don't have the the versions with the thing. I'm gonna put the colors on the screen because I don't remember offhand and there's dog hair on them. Celebi. Okay, so I have this one, which I think is like jam. I think it's confiture, rose confiture or something like that. That, this is my, this is my contrast color. And then I had three different blues that I was trying to choose between in terms of making, you know, the best, the most pop. And so I have this one here and I have this one here. And then I also have this blue, which you may now realize is the reject because I don't have it with me, but I made this cute little headband. How cute is this? I made this cute little headband for Lily. I used a free pattern. The free pattern is called the diamond hat by Part of my reaching and Mizuguchi and I'll link to that and all I did was I used the cast on numbers I followed through her chart once and then I just did ribbing at the end and didn't turn it into a hat but what I wanted to do was see what happens when I put the different colors next to each other and you know what do I want ultimately it to look like and in the end I decided to to skip this blue I decided to do the two kind of more tealy colors with the pink as a pop. I really wanted the pink as a contrast. I didn't want to do three blues. And then again, this is the uh, the main color in the Darjeeling. So this was a really fun way to get to see my gauge, to see the fabric, um, to see the colors, and also have something useful at the end. So Lily will have this in the winter. So yeah, in the end, I'm going with this combo here. That'll be the combo which I think will be really cute. And again, I've sized up one. So I've gone up one size because I, I think maybe whatever my gauge is in this yarn maybe pulls in a tiny bit and I'd like it to be uh, have a little more ease. And then the last test knit that I just signed up for two days ago, I was again just checking my groups on Ravelry and I saw that Andrea Mowry had posted um, a new test call and I'd never, I'd never seen one of her test calls within a period where I figured I could actually get in. And I think this would only been up for three or four hours. And so I popped in, I can't share a picture of the, of the sweater because I mean, I can say it's a sweater <laughs> um, because it is not a secret test knit, but I'm only allowed to give like little sneak peeks. Maybe I'll try and do a little, a little photo with a sneak peek. I don't know if I'm allowed to, if I'm allowed, I'll do that. Uh, but again, it's a color work sweater, but quite different than the one that I'm doing. Um, it's mostly one color with hints of two other colors. And so I've decided the color scheme, but I haven't picked the yarn yet. This is gonna be, it's in a light worsted. Um, the light worsted that it's made in is, I, uh, I don't remember who it's by, but it was more than I wanted to spend on a sweater. So I'm not using the original um, the original maker of the yarn, uh, but I'm going to do it in navy with red and white. Just really classic, really clean. I think it'll really pop. So it'll be navy or at least some sort of deep blue with red and white. I'm actually thinking about maybe either drops air, not drops air, drops uh, lima 
or I'm also looking at a Spanish company that um, I'm wondering if they might work might want to work with me and sponsor the yarn for that so I've reached out to them and we'll see if they're interested in that and if so I'll be able to share that with you next time so that is due at the end of September still two full months so I'm not in a rush I can finish kind of one test knit one at the end of August one at the end of September and one mid-November so lots and lots of time and fun and exciting projects and I, I do enjoy test knitting it's it feels I don't know it's like it's kind of fun to be the first one to work on something and it's kind of a little bit exciting and you get to work with a designer and I don't know what appeals about it to me more like specifically but I guess that okay so next is a little section that is new to my channel and that's called gifting I've given away two of my knits and I wanted to share them with you because now they're no longer in my collection so my friend my dear dear friend Miriam was here from uh, the DC area about well I guess it was probably like three or three or four months ago now and poor Miriam <laughs> she was here and she was here for 10 days and got one day of sunshine keep in mind I think we get something like 320 days of sunshine a year in, in Spain or in this part of Spain in Sicha specifically because we have this like microclimate and it's it can be like terrible cloudy and gross in Barcelona and Sicha it's still beautiful and sunny and so she just had this 10 day period where it was just awful and cold and gross and she had not brought um, you know that many warm clothes with her and so I basically brought down a stack of sweaters for her to wear while she was here and um, I ended up giving her two pieces. So I gave her my ambient sweater, which I'll put in here. My ambient is my only, my only uh, to date, I think, fingering weight sweater. I knit it during lockdown. Um, I remember I bought the kit, I think, did I buy the kit here or in Canada? But like it was right when we first arrived. And uh, it fit me fine, it was very nice. Um, it was maybe a little short in the arms, but it just suited Miriam perfectly and she wore it a lot and so I gave that to her. And then she also wore my, uh, what's the name of that? Oh yeah, my study hall shawl. She also wore my study hall shawl a lot and she just looked so cuddly and cozy and the night before she left, I was like, you take that with you as well. So she took my study hall shawl and I will make that one again because it is a really nice, very practical shawl um, but I'm really happy that those two pieces are with my dear friend Miriam and that uh, she can warm up and, and wrap up in them and get cozy where wherever she is when she you know is maybe missing me or or just wanting a hug from me and she has two different things for me to wear okay so now I'm gonna talk quickly about some acquisitions uh, part of my reaching okay so I have a couple of knit crates and then I have some new to den. Maybe I'll start with a new to den just because it's in my hand. So I've never knit with new to den before. And new to den is an unspun yarn from Sweden. It is the, the fiber is dyed and then it is blended with other fibers to create all these colors. And they have a collection that comes out pretty much every month. I think maybe they're on holiday now, but pretty much every month. It's generally very difficult to get because it sells out like that people set their alarms and you know to get this yarn um, and I've never done that before it's just I don't know I just never did <laughs> and then I happened to be on Instagram uh, I guess it was would have been either the end of June probably the end of June maybe and there was an Instagram post and they said oh our shop is still open we still have yarn when that closes we'll be on holidays for whatever and I was like they still have yarn like I'd never seen I'd never seen it not so sell out within the first couple of hours. So I popped over just to have a look and I ended up getting 300 grams of this. So this is called Vanessa and it's a beautiful kind of a berry, berry wine color. I think it's very pretty. It's kind of the colors that I wanna be knitting for fall and I got the 300 gram bag. It comes in like a paper bag, uh, just wrapped in, wrapped in paper and, and then within something else, obviously. Um, with the 300 gram bag, when I waited, I actually got 335 grams, which is quite a lot. Now people, most people knit this double, which is probably what I'll do. I haven't 100% decided what I'm gonna do yet, but I think I'm going to do the snowy forest. I'll put in a picture. I bought the Lina magazine that this, pattern is in and so I thought 
I'd like to use it since I have it and I'll be able to follow along in the magazine. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, wanted to give this a try. So compared to the Manchalope, I mean, honestly, right now, this is feeling softer on my face. But I would say this feels softer on my neck in terms of pickiness. In this case, it's negligible. But I've heard that depending on the colors, it, it you know, affects, you know, changes the pickiness and whatever. So I'm not using this now. I'm going to use this in the fall. And I think a snowy forest in this beautiful berry color would be pretty. I think, I think the color suits me. You never know, too. If I have some leftover of this, I may end up, because I would, I would guess they're quite similar, I may end up doing some sort of color blocking or color work just because I have the two colors. But I only got the one color of the Nutiden. Okay, and then my Knit Crate, you saw the one, the Old Barn. And then I have this one, which is Vitalana Ascendance and it is 100% Peruvian wool in sport weight. And uh, I haven't decided yet if I wanna use this right now. I also have this one. There are two, I'm only pulling one out of the bag. Love this. This is 48% Merino, 20% baby alpaca, and 32% Pima cotton. And this is Vitalana Lofty DK. Part of me wants, I know that they're different, but part of me wants to do a striped sweater with this, like the Isabel Kramer, you know, the Isabel Kramer one that she has. Well, she's a few that's a striped, but there's a free one. I don't know. Or I might do a tank top with one or the other as well. I also have this one. This is the newest one, I think. This is Knitology Wisp in the color Clay Pot, 100% Merino DK. This is not my jam, this color, this peach, not my jam. So either uh, I dye it or I, I send it on to someone else who will, who will appreciate it. I mean, this is also DK, but these two together, no, not for me. The other thing I've done, and I haven't received it yet, but I did an order from Knit Crate of a sweater's quantity of the bloom in the color nasturnium and i did that because i had some points to use up and so i got the order basically essentially just for the shipping minus five dollars i think um, and i made audrey's striped clark pullover in this yarn and i absolutely loved it and so i thought you know what i'm gonna use up those points and get that nasturnium color and the other thing i want to test out is i believe that knit crate pays the duty in advance or something like that because I've never paid duty on my knit crate uh, and also it says on it um, shipping it's like shipping duty included or something to that effect and I think it was 14 your 14 dollars which I mean if you're gonna pay from shipping from the states it's gonna be 14 dollars anyway so I'll keep you updated on that and see what happens but that's another sweaters quantity that I have coming that probably will go to another test net at some point. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to share with you a few patterns that have joined my Ravelry library lately. A couple of them are paid, but five of them are for free. So uh, I'll tell you how I, do, how I often find my free patterns. So first of all, the two that I have, um, I got the Easy Bralette by Svetlana Volkova. She had had a 50% off sale, and so I picked up that. One of the reasons why I picked that up is because it is um, written for Drops Baby Merino. And if you'll remember, I bought a ton of Drops Baby Merino for Shawlography last year because I was doing Shawlography, the Stephen West Cal, really last minute. And so I, I basically bought yarn on Wednesday for it to start on Friday. <laughs> and then it arrived and I started it and I was like, no, this baby yarn is not meant for this shawl. Like the texture of it is, it's just not meant for it. It was the wrong, the wrong choice. So I have all this baby yarn <laughs> and then, uh, but this would be great, right? Like for a bralette against your skin, soft baby yarn is perfect. So I thought, okay, I'll pick that up. And I'm, and also, even though it's written for adults, a lot of the testers had done it for teens and preteens. And so 
and had shared their numbers, their cast on numbers. And I thought, okay, that's great because I can make it for my girls as well. And again, use up more of this baby yarn because I have a whole box of it. And then the cumulus top, which I told you guys, I'm going to use the rest of the leftovers from my Lapoof cardigan. And so I brought, bought the cumulus top a little while ago now. Um, that's from Petite Knit. It's just an, a nice, simple, kind of almost a cami top. And I think I will have enough to complete that from the leftovers from the Lapoof. So the Lapoof will go from being one cardigan to two garments and a hat. Good. Okay, so free patterns. Probably once or twice a week, I go into Ravelry and I click on patterns and I just click on what's hot right now, which is comes up by default. And I just look at the first page and I see, you know, what's new, what's going on. And then occasionally what I'll do is I'll go to the bottom and I will click free to see what is popping up for free. Because sometimes patterns are free for a limited time. They're, uh, you know, they're free with the newsletter discount or whatever. And so you'll see those free patterns come up. And so then I immediately, if I like them, obviously, add them to my library because if later they are no longer free, if they're in your library, they stay free. <laughs> so I like to do that every once in a while and just add to my library. Um, a couple places that you wanna get on their mailing list, actually not a couple, just, just the one, Unit, which is a Toronto um, knitting and sewing shop as well as they have a wonderful designer, Claudia Q, who does beautiful designs. And every once in a while, they will put out, they will make a few of their patterns free for like the weekend or whatever. And so you have to go online and get them. You have to get them from their website, but then you can just put them in your Ravelry library and you're good. But get on their mailing list because their patterns are beautiful and they're for kids and adults. So that's a good tip. Okay, so the five free patterns that I have added to my stash lately are the Weekend Shorty Socks by Summerly Knits. Summerly Knits does amazing sock patterns and these little shorty socks are great for using up leftovers of which I have many. And now that I think I have fixed my gauge in terms of sock knitting, I think that um, I actually might be able to make some of her socks because before her gauge was was unachievable for me. I couldn't make any of the sizes because I couldn't get enough stitches in in the, well, I couldn't hit gauge, <laughs> not said. <laughs> the Tulip Tank from Pearl Soho. If you haven't been to Pearl Soho's website, they have tons and tons of free patterns, both for knitting and for sewing and crochet and other things like that. So the Tulip Tank, uh, again, could be something that I could make with the two skeins that I have from Knit Crate. So I put that in my stash. The Tip Top Tank by Emily Bolduan. I'm sure I'm butchering her name, so sorry, Emily. Uh, the Tip Top Tank, another one that I could maybe make with my knit crate with just two skeins. Super cute little tank, very practical, quick make for summer. So I added that to my library. The La Brisa Top by Anna Kim. This is really cute, quite different, and I love the story behind it. She lives in Barcelona, and she wrote it last year, wrote the pattern last year when um, we were having a crazy heat wave, and she was hot and trying to like survive the hot summer heat in Barcelona, and she made this top, so I had to add that to my library. And then lastly is the Livresque cardigan by Espace Tricot. Of course, Espace Tricot has so many amazing free patterns. You must, must, must go over and visit them. And this one I thought great for, again, using up little things, but also it's worse to wait, which means super fast. Okay, guys, my battery is about to die. And so I'm mute taking that as my cue that I have talked for long enough. It is time to go. I hope that you enjoyed my little chat about knitting and I have lots more coming up. I'm sorry that I've been away so much lately. It's not a long-term thing. I am back, I will be around. I'm just doing the best I can to get through a move. I'm sure we've all been there. So thank you so much for your patience. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing or knitting or taking care of your plants or whatever makes your crafty heart happy. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.